How's it going guys? In this video we're going to be playing around with tire pressure monitor sensors. Um, the owner of this car gave me these wheels uh, because he went and bought alloy wheels so he's buying new sensors and new tires and everything. So I have these to use on mine. Uh, my car, which is this one right here, doesn't have any at all. Um, the batteries are all dying in them and such and I was using different wheels on the car you know so it's, the light was on if you just have one messed up you have you know this giving you a message and all that stuff on the dash so but anyways in this video here I want to program a couple of these to the car with the tire on but um, this one right here either has a dead battery or it doesn't work at all but uh, what we're going to do is you know program them with these the Altel and then this little tool right here um, basically this gets you into the menu it doesn't really do anything special as far as that go it gets you into the menu and then this tool right here actually does the job I think the car can get into the menu itself but I don't know I know this thing right here is capable of getting there um, but what we're going to try doing is putting the sensors in a bottle and then pressurizing the bottle so that way it uh, you know I can just throw it in the trunk and then later on, uh, when the tires go bad, you know, on the, I can just put a different set of wheels on. Because I own, like, well, like 18 of wheels with tires on. So I don't want to have to take them off the rim. You know, I can just mount the tire on there, put the tire pressure monitor in, a, you know, another one in the container, pressurize the container. Um, I see guys all the time making videos of putting... Uh, you know actually drilling holes in something or like a spare tire and sticking them in there and you know but I don't think these need to have the valve stem actually sticking through you know it, it just as long as the sensor is under pressure um, it could be loose inside of a container and that's what kind of what this video is about so but anyway I'm gonna mount those two right there on the car these two here I'm gonna break down off the tire off the rim and take the sensor out of it and then we'll find a container all right guys sorry to miss you on going through the menus and all that stuff of this thing and the use of this thing basically you, you get go into this thing get the menus uh, the learn process started and you go around starting at the driver's side front wheel then passenger side front wheel and you go to the back passenger wheel and then the back of driver's wheel each one you, each, you push this and it gets it going as you can see the antenna is all damaged because it seemed like the one wheel one time I was able to get it to program and but it just seemed like the antenna of this thing wasn't getting close enough to it and then I ended up losing it started over again because it timed out and then I lost this one I had a heck of a time with all the wheels this one here was the worst. I ended up taking this one out of the wheel. It does work, but you can't program it through the wheel. So we can continue on with our experiment of putting it into a container and pressurizing it. You can see here, I go through the menu. Oop, I just missed it. See right there it says zero pressure. And the other one's 31. Then we got 39 and 40. And then back to the mileage. But anyways, um, yes, yeah, so we just need to put this in a container and hopefully uh, I can just throw it in the trunk and forget about it. And then later on down the road, I don't have to worry about uh, what wheel I stick on the car because it won't be in the wheel anymore. All right, the experiment worked. You see here we have a pure leaf tea bottle with a valve stem in the top. And you can see how bloated it is. It has 40 psi in it. Um, of course, you know, tire pressure monitor thingy is it's in there. It's in there. <laughs> and we'll go to the menu. There it is. The one that says 41 is that 
is the it's in the container. So yeah, it worked. So yeah, you could probably just put as many of them as you wanted to in there. Um, I'd like to find one of them like big mouth top pop bottles. They have a top about this big, but I don't know if they make them anymore. I think they did away with them. They're like one liter. Because I know for a fact a pop bottle can handle like a pop bottle can handle way over 100 psi and. The tea bottles right there, they blow up around 60. They, the bottoms blow out of, the bottom, you know, out of them. So, plus, oh, the pot bottle's made to hold hold pressure, so the lid and stuff probably ain't going to leak like this one here is probably going to. But uh, just for an experiment, it did work. Yeah. All right, guys, there's been some development since the last take. Um, problems with tire pressure monitor itself and the problems with the containers that I was putting them in we got a, we got a buddy here um, the risk factor of the bottom of these containers um, I have gotten to you know Gatorade or anything you know with a big top on it these these containers are not made for pressure um, I could not find a soda container uh, with the big top anymore uh, which would which would probably work for this but the, the biggest problem wasn't the bottom of the boat and out it every container I tried easily handled 40 psi uh, this right here around 60 to 80 the bottoms blows out of them you know so you do have the, the, the a risk factor you know even at 40 psi there's a, a you know a risk that this could blow up in your hand while you're trying to fill it um, you know, so the, but one of the biggest problems with this was is that after a couple of days, the top would start leaking with the valve stem went through. The, the lid would, you know, bulge enough to a point to where it would start leaking. No matter what container I tried, T containers, these, um, I had the best success really with V8 ones. The little V8 ones, those would did the best. Um, they would go for about a week before they start leaking. So it, it was just so unreliable. Um, so, I went with uh, using a PVC pipe with end caps. Um, this is working. There's another problem with it. When you put these things underneath your seat or in your trunk or anything like that, they go to sleep. They basically, when your vehicle moves, there is a sensor inside of this that turns it on to start reporting. Um, back to the computer and the computer has a default pretty much like when you first fire it up in the morning to go to take off it just displays what was last known for so long um, you know till it, it waits for these things to wake up and start reporting and, it, and it's all about battery life um, it's not like trying to keep people from hacking it or something so that it has to be moving is to keep you know the battery from dying it only turns on when the vehicle is, is moving so the problem was is that with the thing underneath the seat there wasn't enough movement to keep the thing you know to wake the thing up and you'd end up with like just slashes on your dash where you know for the reporting the uh, tire monitor uh, pressure it would just have little slashes it was saying that it was there but it was just you know it it just wasn't working so, they need to be mounted to something that moves. So, I came up with this, which is, looks kind of hilarious, really, because it, it kind of looks like, it kind of looks like little pipe, you know, I don't know if I should say it on video, but, kitty kitty. Um, they're strapped to the axle, and there is enough movement from the axle. This cat is driving me crazy. Um, to keep them wake up, to woke up. I did have one time in the last 3,000 miles. That's how long I've had these strapped to my axle. Now it's 3,000 miles. One time I was driving a length of highway that was freshly paved, and one of them shut off. And you know, I got the little slashes on the dash for that sensor. Um, but very quickly, you know, the way the roads are around here, I hit a pothole or a ridge in the road it woke it up but even on uh, you know just roads that has just little creases in it you know just the littlest uh, it, it keeps them woke up works just fine but they do have to be mounted to something 
that keeps them uh, woke up. Um, I had thoughts of maybe the lower part of the, of the shock in the back, you know, where the basically the thing never, you know, the, the outside part of the shock never gets to. I thought about mounting it to that. Um, so it, it's it's kind of a pain in the butt if you want to try to do this. Um, you know, that and depends on who sees them. Things underneath your car, they might call some authorities thinking there's something going on. But, uh, alright, so that was the, this was the end result of making this work. Um, right now, these back tires have sensors in, but the front ones do not. And, uh, you know, here pretty soon I'm going to be switching out to something I could drive in the winter with. And, you know, I won't have to worry about putting the sensors in because they're in a place where I don't have to mess with them. So, uh, well, I'll catch you guys later.